Mr. Krabs and the Bikini Bottom People's Army won't let you take the secret formula. You will be defeated! Please! Yes, yes, it's all falling in black This is quality content. Thank <laughs> you. 
Anyway, uh, let me actually get to the actual news at hand here, because... This is what we're here for. So, this is the breaking news that this whole fucking thing is about, basically. Is Meghan Markle's rise part of the Clinton's plan to outsmart Team Obama as Biden loses grip? So, it's crazy. Sp Sputnik is the first official news media um company to cover this so if you guys don't know this i have been predicting for very very long and i've been saying for a really long time that they are planning on fielding Meghan markle to run for presidency if not in 2024 then then after right then in 2028 or something and that all of these new schemes, the 1619 Project, this new way of questioning the very foundations of the American Revolution and the Republic, Land Back, which is funded by Amazon, um, and, then, and then in real life, the institutional crisis facing the American Republic, where the judiciary is becoming increasingly politicized, the institutions of American democracy are somehow now under threat like never before, there's a... The, the, it's like the American institutions cannot contain the extent of the political antagonism at hand, which all of these problems, basically, you could easily see some elites sitting in a circle and be like, huh, I know how to solve these contradictions. We just need to return to the monarchy, right? We have to return to the institutional monarchy because the problem is the democracy. The problem is the republic, right? It's kind of like what Curtis C. Arvin says but with a more um, sinister twist, right? It's like, this is the perfect thing. I mean, we're going to heal the wounds of the American Revolution. And we're going to heal the wounds of slavery. We're going to heal the wounds of everything. And the America's founding political antagonism, that's the foundation of the country. 
through returning to the British. The whole American Revolution was a mistake. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this also because it's not just a, I'm not just a conspiracy theorist. I'm saying this also because I really do believe that we have witnessed a forgetting of America. We've, we've forgotten what actually made America unique in the scheme of world history. And the American ruling class has pretty much turned to Britain for spiritual guidance. And it's like we, have, we give so much respect to the British because we see them as like the wise father and it's like we just rebelled for a second. We've completely forgotten what makes America, America, right? So that's, that's the situation we're dealing with here. We're, we've forgotten what makes America its own thing anymore, right? Um, so yeah, that's the kind of threat that we face, a return to the British monarchy and a complete like, oh yeah, this whole America thing was just one embarrassing mistake. You know, the fact that our elites are literally buying into this through the 1619 Project They've forgotten the essence of the American Revolution. So my thesis is that the Communist Party of the United States of America is uniquely disposed with being able to remember the essence of the American Revolution. Because that's what every revolution in history does. It redeems the revolutions of the past and assimilates them into a new meaning. We need to give new meaning to the American Revolution. And I think communism is the best way to do that. Communism is the most powerful way in which we can return meaning to the American Revolution. What does that American Revolution even mean anymore? Our elites don't believe in it. Even the people are losing faith in it. Ideologically, there's, it's, like, it's like one big mistake in history. That's how the academic elite is treating it. And that's how the literal elite in power is treating it. Do you think that um, the Democrats have any regard for the history of the republic or the constitution no i mean look at roe v wade and what's going on roe v wade is is part of this actually it was very uh, calculated and methodical i read the the supreme court's opinion that was leaked and they literally talk about it and anticipate the public reactions to it is like yeah we need to make sure the public has faith in the supreme court as an institution and the judiciary as an institution it's vital for our national security and our democracy most people weren't even interested in the legal reasoning behind overturning roe v wade that's the hilarious part most people just assume they're like okay they're overturning roe v wade but but they didn't even ask the question, like, is Roe v. Wade sustainable from the perspective of a judicial constitutional perspective? Because it's actually not, right? And I'm not moralizing or complaining about that fact. I'm just saying it, it attests to the fact. I, I don't really like the judiciary, if you want to ask me. I think the judiciary's power needs to be se severely limited, right? I'm just trying to say, though, that... Um, People have lost faith in America. They've lost faith in American institutions, and they don't believe in them anymore. They see American institutions as a means to an end, a means to the realization of these new ideologies and these new trends and all this kind of stuff. And, and Meghan Markle is going to be their answer to all of this. This is what they're planning. I've been telling you this for a long time. They're planning on having Meghan Markle be the answer to all of America's woes. You know, why did land back get 10 million from Amazon? I'll tell you why. Because privatizing land is also going to be a part of this. What better way to like wage an assault on the public of the res public? You know what a republic means? It means a res publica, right? It's a commons. What better way of undermining that? Then just privatizing all of the public land that belongs to us. And hey, you know, that's why I'm really suspicious of all these new critiques of the founding fathers. Because it's like, where are you making that critique from? Do you live in like some revolutionary enclave or something? No, you live in the fucking Anglo-dominated empire. So it's like, you've already been, I'm so over the American Revolution. Okay, what, 
What does that mean? We're going to return to the fucking British? Because that's what it looks like. If you look at the people f economically in control, huh? if you look at the bankers in control, huh? if you look at the composition of the ruling class, huh? I mean, all of these things clearly show... If you look at the spider web of control and 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 raw financial power of the capitalist class, huh? Where it's all going, it's the British Empire, the British Empire, right? But no, the city of London isn't a thing. It's not. It's not fucking huge and overwhelming. The fuck? Jackson sent me something about... Okay. Anyway, um... So Sputnik is covering this article, and, and yeah, guys, Meghan Markle is their plan. If you think they don't have a plan, you're wrong. They have a plan. The revolution is revisionism. I fuck white lies, and U.S. is already Anglo rot. It's not some new shit. Learn about Five Eyes Haas, you moron. You are just too young and now noticing overlap. Learn about the Five Eyes... You fucking dumbass, I know about the- That's literally the British Empire. The Five Eyes is literally a fucking British Empire, dumbass. And yeah, the American Revolution was a big blow to the British Empire. And all of your critiques of the American Revolution are knocking on an open fucking door. Every fucking lefty critique of the American Revolution I've ever seen was more or less uh, saying we didn't purge the British enough. Which I agree with. We didn't. We need to continue and deepen that revolution. I'm not just saying we had a one revolution. That's the first chapter of the American Revolution. We have to deepen that revolution further. So we can rid ourselves of the British Empire once and for all and forever. But no, I promise you... In the, in the Good Morning Revolution in 2024, if we're not successful, we're going to have Joe Sims and Rosanna and Anita Waters. So, Rosanna, now, as communists, we're against monarchy. But Meghan Markle, she's progressive. And she's a person of color. And she's pushing for all this progress. And she seems to have a lot of support in the coastal urban settings and she's pro-abortion what do you think about communists supporting the british monarchy um i think it's a really good idea i think we should really get behind Meghan markle to stop trump come on man it's like you know this is what's gonna fucking happen you just know this is what's gonna happen we all know it's what's gonna happen We all know that's what's going to fucking happen. It's clear as day. Meghan Markle's 2024 U.S. election odds have been boosted by a new Democracy Institute poll showing that the Duchess of Sussex is one of the preferred candidates. The poll's results reflect a complicated political game within the Democratic Party involving the Bidens, the Obamas, and the Clintons, according to the Democracy Institute's directors. So there's a new institute, there's a new poll... Showing she is actually one of the preferred candidates for 2024. I've been calling this for a year and it's fucking happening. Joe Biden and the Democrats are facing a dismal political situation ahead of the 2022 midterms. According to a series of surveys conducted by the British newspaper, Democracy Institute. Should Joe Biden not seek renomination in 2024? The Democratic Party's presidential candidate, our polling finds that Meghan Markle would have a decent chance of securing the party's nomination. Michelle Obama's a preferred candidate. She's not going to run. You know she's not going to run. 
Because it's not part of their plan for her to run. She does not enjoy politics, and I don't expect her to seek the presidency. Exactly. The party's respective far-left progressive and center-left wings, along with the respective Obama and Clinton power bases, are divided over who should succeed Biden. As a result, there is a base of support for Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, Warren, Cortez, but none of them have high levels of support. Markle could present herself as the new... Oh my God, I said this. I said this. This is, this is literally what I said. You want to know what? I think this person was an infrared viewer. I think this was an infrared viewer who watched this. Almost 100%. This had to have been an infrared viewer. The new, modern, biracial face of the Democratic Party. One that is untainted by previous political compromises, legislative battles, and controversial votes. She wouldn't be most Democrats' first choice. She could win if most Democrats viewed her as their favorite second choice. This is gonna fucking happen. I, this is literally happening. This is literally happening. I, 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 it's like guaranteed at this point. Yeah, it's happening. They hired a PR guru who helped re-elect Obama in 2020. To transform their image. What do you think that's for? <laughs> Prior to this, she hired a former Hillary Clinton campaign aides. Does this confirm she has political ambitions? She's clearly an ambitious person and is clearly interested in holding political office. Both the advisors she has hired and the work this political advisory team has done exploring the possibility of a presidential campaign confirmed that her initial interest at least is serious. It's always uh, never, never assume someone's gender. Always, always ask. Always ask. Always ask. She is probably now at stage, which will at least until midterm elections in November, during which she must divine the answers to three questions. Is there sufficient potential support for her candidacy among Democratic voters? Can she raise the enormous sums of money necessary to compete in the Democratic primaries and caucuses? Is there a potential audience of Democratic voters for a non-political celebrity candidate with high name recognition but little of the partisan background and loyalties normally required to garner the party's nomination. Despite their long-standing relationship, I don't think Clinton is promoting Markle. Clinton harbors the hope that over the years, the party will realize neither Biden nor Harris is electable and will turn to her as the party's savior. That's what I, yeah. Um, But Clinton may also view herself as Markle's long-term political mentor. So it's Clinton that Markle's being... Uh... That they're working with.
Should Marco come to the political fore in the next five to ten years, Clinton can wield a particular Please. influence upon Marco. Thoughts on Domenico Losurdo? And thoughts on his book, Liberalism, A Counter History? It's good. I recommend it. It's good. I recommend. And extend her political legacy in that fashion. The Hill recently reported on Bill Clinton's meeting with Joe Biden on the White House. What do you think about this meeting? What issues could come the two senator parties to discuss? That Meghan Markle is the future of the Democratic Party. And it's basically a way to dismantle the American Republic, uh, dismantle what, what constitutional liberties we have left. And it's, it's the way for the Davos agenda and the Great Reset agenda to get full implementation. I mean, there's so many issues facing the institution of American democracy right now. And this is their solution. It's going to be Meghan Markle. And the whole fallout with the royal family was a sham. And this is something I've been predicting for a year, you know, now. And, you know, this is, yeah, she's the, the, she's British royalty. She's married to a British prince. And it's, they're basically coming to take back their former colony, more or less. If you know anything about the international networks of finance and the city of London and how all that whole thing works, you know, they're basically preparing her. It's, it's, it, we are already ruled by the British Empire, right? And they just want to make sure it happens politically as well. They want to, like, if, affect that change on an official level. So we're facing a really big um, challenge up ahead, right? Um, with this future we're facing. Uh, so th this is what I want us to talk more about because, you know, with all the division that's going on in this country, this is going to be their solution. It's going to more. And then this is going to be the foot in the door to be like, huh? You know, if you know about the New York Times 1619 project, huh? The founding fathers were bad, huh? America was founded uh, because, you know, the s slave owners or whatever. I mean, so we have to go back and we have to be reconciled with the British Empire in a new way. And it's going to be this woke fucking tyranny this woke takeover that they're gonna you know affect and that's what we're dealing with you know um so she has these ambitions and it's 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 from a poll recently by the democracy institute that we're looking at here which showed that it's only next to um michelle obama that Democratic parties, they would prefer Meghan Markle over everyone. So all these people that people think are going to run in case Biden doesn't in 2024, Warren, AOC, Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton, they don't have high levels of support, right? Meghan Markle, in comparison, has very high levels of support. You know, and she's like this new, modern, biracial face. And that's a really important part because this is going to be like a woke thing. They're going to be like, oh, you know, she's biracial. So this is healing the wounds of slavery and the crimes against indigenous people. And we're going to have a return to the British crown, you know, and it's one that's untainted. So, you know, we know our elites want to erode bit by bit every last piece of constitutional liberty we have left. They, they've done this in recent. I don't know if I can talk about it on YouTube, but they've done this in recent years. Um because of a specific, uh, um, uh, let's just say, a big world event that, ha that happened in 2020, okay? Um, they have done it with the Patriot Act under Bush. They're doing it more, you know, the economy is changing in such a way that it's increasingly ruled shamelessly by these cartels of international finance, BlackRock, Vanguard, uh, the whole economy is being rigged, basically. it's We don't even have a free market, so-called free market capitalist economy anymore. It's it's centrally planned by bankers and the ruling monopoly capitalist class. You know, we're, we're, we're basically facing this situation where they want to they want to ditch our constitution i mean look at the recent overturning of of roe v wade now regardless of where you stand on that issue everyone can at least agree that when it, when it comes to roe v wade um it it reflects a serious lack of faith in the current institutions of the american republic i mean the judiciary rules in a certain way and it's it's politicized it, immediately we don't just say oh that's just the, the, that's how our that's our institution in the republic we politicize it first and we see it as a means to an end instead of as the very ends of of politics right so we're facing this situation where 
The political divisions in this country are too great for the institutions of the republic to handle. And that's actually purposefully manufactured by the elites to get people to no longer believe in anything about the constitution or, or the republic. And th so when they roll out Meghan Markle and all these emergency acts that they intend on doing, you know, the first thing they're going to come for, by the way, is that First Amendment, right? It's the First Amendment that's really, I mean, they're already doing this with their so-called Ministry of Truth. And I'm sure you guys have already um, heard about that Ministry of Truth. Um, and that's going to be their foot in the door to start cracking down on our First Amendment rights. Now, our Second Amendment rights, they've already been coming after those for decades and decades. And that's, that's also part of the plan and part of the picture. So slowly and slowly, they're trying to erode our constitutional liberties um, and, and put us under the, the rule of the British Empire. And that's what we're dealing with here. Um, now, this sounds crazy, but you have to understand how the people in power think. If you read the New York Times... It's not a conspiracy theory. They have the 1619 Project. And in the 1619 Project, they claim that the American Revolution was about slavery. And actually, the British Empire was progressive because the British were about to abolish slavery. And we were going to have a racial, harmonious society. And the Founding Fathers ruined the whole thing. And that America, from its very founding, was a mistake. All of our constitutional protections and liberties are a mistake. They're all racist and all, all that kind of stuff. So we need to return back into the fold of monarchy and the tyranny of, of the British. And we already are under their tyranny in the form of being under the tyranny of the primarily Anglo-Saxon international ruling class. However, they're basically just trying to make it official. And the rule of British intelligence and its infiltration of our country after World War II is very well documented and very clear to everyone who has studied and researched the matter. So, I mean, we're, we're facing a really dangerous situation right now, right? And there's actually a lot about this that, you know, um, that, that needs to be covered and deserves to be covered. So, so uh, can she raise all the money? She hired the former Obama PR strategist who helped him get elected in 2012. Previously, she had the campaign staffers on Hillary Clinton's team helping her out. And there's speculation that Hillary Clinton is actually planning on helping Meghan Markle uh, through the years mentoring her, right? So Clinton may view herself as Meghan Markle's long-term political mentor, and as such, she may come to think that should Markle come to be the, the political four in the next five to ten years, Clinton can wield particular influence upon Markle, a campaign novice, and extend her um, political le legacy in that fashion. So The Hill recently reported on Bill Clinton's meeting with Joe Biden at the White House, and what do we think of this meeting? So the meeting is most likely serving two purposes, right? First, in political terms, Clinton can console Biden about how to best govern when your party no longer holds power in Congress, because that's what we can expect in the midterm. So this whole debacle, thank you, Marty, for the, for the dollar, but this whole debacle about Roe v. Wade, well, it's a way for Democrats to save themselves in the midterms, and we'll see how they perform uh, because of that. That's really going to mobilize the electorate, we can, we can expect. But they're also expecting they're not going to hold power in Congress in the way they do now, right? So in 94, Clinton's Democrats suffered a massive defeat to the Republicans, and they lost control of both the Senate and the House of Representatives. So they were persuaded that in the first two years, they were too radical uh, for America's tastes. So that he moved to the center in 95 and 96, and this parallels with Biden's presidency. Now, the, the fucking crazy thing about that is that Biden was already a compromised candidate. So it's like... I love your historical references. It's important. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And thank you so much, Rasta Mike. So the, the crazy thing here about this is that Biden was already a compromised candidate. So how, how, I mean, how much can Biden go further to the center, really, before he becomes the far-right American Azov battalion? And that's actually what we're facing, too. You know, Ukraine, I want to teach you guys what happens when liberal democracies go into emergency mode. So Ukraine is a liberal democracy post-Maidan, but they also have these emergency powers. They defer to the Azovite thugs, which they use to kind of take care of business and kind of get out the big stick when they need to control people in ways that aren't constitutionally allowed in Ukraine, right? That's also what we're going to face in America. We already kind of have that with Antifa and other elements, but that's going to get even worse. We're going to see these 
extra democratic, extra legal um, fascistic thugs in black shirts in cohort with Meghan Markle um, ascending to power, clamping down on the American people in an unconstitutional way. That we're going to have an American Azov. We can expect the Azovite tendency to spread to, the, to, to our country, to America. Um, and then, will Biden be humbled in his election office next year? And will his party's left wing let him moderate on his approach? They're going to keep... A, and then, listen, they're also going to erode on our constitutional liberties in the name of compromising. Oh, we need to be bigger warmongers than we already are because we're too left wing. You know, they always somehow compromise. Every time they comp, every time they compromise on the middle, it's always in a way that benefits the ruling class. What do you think about Clinton and Obama's recent statements and public appearances? Uh, they're becoming more prominent because of the midterms, because they're in terrible shape. And wow, you know that that Roe v. Wade decision really handed them those midterms on a silver platter. I mean, that was like the best thing. Watch Ukraine on Fire 2016 Real Documentary. Thank you, Darkman. I've watched it before, the Oliver Stone documentary. Yeah, I highly recommend it as well for those who haven't. Yeah, I've, I've, I've watched it before. Um, I, I, I don't really cover um, the Ukraine conflict in that much depth because I used to do that on Twitch, and I was the only voice on Twitch that did that, so that was my content. But, but Twitch banned me, so... <laughs> Um, I kind of lost everything I built from there. And on YouTube, I kind of um, want to provide a different niche of, of content because I think there's already a lot of excellent content creators covering that Ukraine conflict. And I, I don't have much more to add on it, to be honest. And also, I, I don't particularly enjoy covering it. Uh, I'm more of kind of like a philosophical guy and I, I like to cover politics the most. I like covering politics. That's my thing, right? Um, war and geopolitics is not particularly my forte, uh, as far as stream content is concerned, because it's just, there's too much I don't understand about it. But anyway, um, the Clintons need both Biden and Harris to fail if Clinton is to be courted by the party's next presidential nominee, which I think is very clear. That's it's going to happen. As someone who knows, um, I wanted to get to with the whole Meghan Markle stuff. Like, for example, that Trump hopes she runs for president in 2024. And, and this was um, last year. He said he hopes Meghan Markle runs in 2024 to make his decision much easier. Um, let's see where that came. I'm not a fan of hers. Followed reports that she was meeting with senior Democratic figures. Um, I hope it happens. Yeah, so that's that's a thing that's going to happen.